Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360 of this little model we have in front of us. So this is from an email question, I got mailed to image to me as a question if I could show how I would do this. The uh, person asked me a question, had already made a model of it, but I wanted to see how my uh, totally honest stupid brain would do this <laughs> in a strange way. Uh, there's not really not that much in the timeline here, but yeah, it's a bit interesting. Let's have a look at the images first of all. This is like the question, you can see this starts off like a sheet metal part, as these uh, openings or angular openings are punched out. You can see that this shape is a bit different, just do the red, it's got a red marker. Uh, looking at this shape here, and the shape we have at the bottom, this is basically this, are a bit different. This is like a bit of a sharp angle. This is very soft. I'm going to be a bit lazy and make these two the same. So basically, uh, this shape here is a rotated image of this shape down here. We can have a look from the side too. So I don't need to model everything. You can see, if we will look at this, I have, if we wanted to make a real full model of this, that is, yeah, that could be fun, but very useless in my opinion, because this is a manufacturing process. If I would model this and try to get a close process, you can have a feeling of this triangular bends here. It's like it's bending here, and then there's a bend here. That's how I look at this. Uh, can you please delete the stuff on my screen? Thank you. And of course, we have a repetitive pattern. You can see we have these edges over and over again. This is the same bend over and over again. So my thinking here is, as I said, I wanted to change. So this bend down here is the same as this. That makes that I really don't need to do one part. I don't only need to do this. This here will be a rotated image of that, and then the two on the back, let's change to a darker color. These two back here are mirror images of this here, so I really only need to make this one here. And let's have a look at the other side. And the design intent, let's change over to blue so you can see. As I talked, we have some axis over here. So my design intent working, this is just how I think. I will start by doing a rectangle. The rectangle will represent uh, the shape in between here. This gives me the pattern distance and everything. It gives me like all the parts needed and I will model only one. I forget which one is. I think it's that one I'm going to model. Let's see what the model. And in Fusion course, here's my model. I'm trying to make it parametric. So in my definition of parameter is not naming the parameters, is that the parameters is driving the design. So I can change the number and things change. And I will most probably make mistakes. So we are in an empty design here. As I said, I'm going to start with this rectangle here. That's driving the design. The size of this rectangle will drive a distance in all directions. So let's start with that. We're going to create a sketch from the top. We're going to do a rectangle for simplicity, center point rectangle, let's use our region. And I'm going to do this 100 by 40 to start with. And just to check, I'm going to use these parameters later, so just, uh, this is the large, this is the small one, and the large right click out is called D1, and this of course is D2, okay, I know that. Uh, for avoiding the profile here, which I will not use, I will turn everything into construction lines, and this removes this flashing thing of profiles. Let's go back to our home view and finish sketch. So this is like our base geometry. So what I will do now, I will start by sketching. So this here, let's go back to the image, back to the image, back to the image. This here is going to be one full here, and here I have like this bent edge is going to be in the middle here i have two bent edges one on the uh, center of each x is on the corner of these here and this is going to be in the middle i'm hope i'm confusing the shit out of you that's the whole meaning of this create offset plane this plane distance to object i'm going to select one corner here create a sketch on our new beautiful plane E for project because we want to take the dimension we had in prior sketch and use this line here. Hit OK. Do you look at sketch. You're looking for the correct direction. Open up our browser and hide our first sketch. This is only geometry so supposed to help me. So I'm going to switch it into construction. And now I'm basically going to draw a parallelogram. So this is going to be one twist 
the parallel side here another twist and over to here and i'm going to add some constraints like that of course these two are going to be parallel i'm really not interested in that line or that line those are just to help me constrain the geometry and of course we're going to do a midpoint between this and here this is very easy to by mistake click on the line i can do that barely but so it gets like a center point to center point control set undo go back midpoint constraint between here and click on the point so like that we have starting to get our constraints to work now the question how long is this line going to be well if we look at our image if you think about this the distance from here to here if we flatten down this point here should be connected to this point here so we can do a circle just do it a construction show see the keyboard for circle if you're a beginner there are beginner tutorials do not watch my videos start with beginner tutorials circle so this is the circle these to follow so we can do a coincident constraint between here and here this means now that the length of this will stay correct the whole time um, and of course, I need some type of dimension for this angle here. So doing, we could also, of course, do a dimension with distance, but I'm going to make a angle. Let's put it over here. 25 degrees this time. And I know I already done this design. This is how I started the first time I needed to do it. I know I only got to do this is like the full band. Let's have a look at the image once again. The line I have here is this full blue line here but you can see you can see the edge also here i only really need half of this the design intent is to make like this shape here that means i need half of that so i'm going to break the line use break on this and see sometimes fusion is nice in this case we're nice because the sketch is still fully constrained because it's added the parallel to constraint to both these lines and it's parallel to this so everything is still fixed in the sketch so we're going to finish sketch gonna create a new sketch i'm gonna now make it turn on our first sketch so we can see where we are i'm gonna make it in the middle here i want to make this bl the blue line from previous here on this uh, we have our region point here we're gonna make a line I'm gonna hide the sketch sketch we don't need that make a line like this i'm gonna make it midpoint between this and here how do i now constrain it I can simply do P for project, project in these two lines, hit OK. I'm going to hide the previous sketch, but it's easier to see. These two lines, control to select them both and make them construction because they are only construction. And I'm going to do a midpoint constraint between this and this. So there's a constraint missing up here, which of course might cause problem now, because as previous, the previous sketch was behind it. We broke up this into two lines. We need to do the same thing here. We could sketch two lines, but gonna do a break like that. Did it break it? No. Oh, it doesn't break it in the midpoint, so we're gonna redo that. So I made a mistake. Let's delete this one. Lines. And do it from here from down to the midpoint. I will forget that point it's, uh, doesn't break lines. So I do a line from this origin point up to the midpoint, up to the midpoint. So now basically I have all the geometry I need. I'm gonna finish sketch. Have a look from the left side so you can now see one axis one axis one axis let's have a look at the real world part we have a mess i'm gonna remove some of the stuff over here so it's a bit let's go back to blue so we can have a look blue 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 light blue where are you if you think we're done now i have sketched uh this here i've sketched this here i have sketched this here I have broken this line, I have broken this line, so what I need to use now by sketching this is this here and this here is the interesting ones I want to use, so let's go back to our sketch. So the interesting one I said is the low one here and the top one here. Can we change, no, we can't change it here, but anyway, we're going to stay like that. So now I need to make a path for this to follow. We can use loft, but I will use sweep using things in the menu here i like to use them from a top down extrude wall sweep loft loft is the last one i try to avoid loft but in so in this case i will use sweep uh, i need a plane where i can sketch the path looking at this the plane that is obviously the best one i think here is the plane that goes from here to here to here so i'm going to create construct plane through three points 
select the three points I want and I get the slope for left. I have a plane that's here that's perpendicular to the previous sketches. Create a sketch of this one. We get an origin point up here and we get this here. We need to be have this projected thing. It's going to do P for project. I get the full line here. I'm going to turn that into construction line. The only thing I'm interested in is this point down here. So I'm going to do a line from here straight over. I'm going to do a line. We have this origin point here straight over. And I'm going to make these two lines equal because they are going to line up when I rotate the body. So this has to be the same length to get this uh, like connection thing here where the parts are connected. If you were to do waves, you can do that too. It would be a nice printer, but in the real world, if I turn off edges, you need to have like this connection feeling or otherwise it will not be the same shape. Even if not making it totally correct, I'm going to do a spline from here to here. Finish spline, add tangent constraint because it looks good. Like that, it's not, still not fully constrained because I need to add a dimension to the length of this line here. So the width I had was D1, and I'm going to divide that by 10 to start with. So this is derived from the dimension we had for this full length of things, uh, the pattern basically. I'm going to finish sketch. And we're here, and now we can do, we're going to use surface tools because, okay, let's go back to the picture. This is a sheet metal thing, or this starts like a sheet metal part. Uh, so what I like to do, I like to make a surface that represents the center of the material because then everything will be symmetric. So we're going to do create surface, sweep, select the profile, select the path. Like that. We could also make a loft from here to here and add a rail. But loft, I try to avoid loft. Lofts are really good, but they sometimes can make you strange things for you. So this is very simple. I take a profile here and I sweep it along a path. Hit OK. So we are coming this far. We have basically basically made our basic geometry. So I'm going to do a save now because things crash. Just want to do a pattern later. We're going to turn on our first sketch, have a look, we have a body. So let's see if we can manipulate the numbers for our model. What happens if we update our model? So we're going to open up here. We have some sketches with some dimension. We have not named them. We can do what I want. Let's just simply try if we change this to 30 degrees, 15 degrees. Yeah, it was good. Let's do it 25 for the fun of it. Uh, if we change this dimension, we still do that 50. Oh, something's gone on here. You can see it didn't follow along. I'm going to do a control Z and go back. I'm just going to again go up and open. And I'm going to have a look if I change this one here, 120. And the model once again break. This, this body here is not following the sketches as I want. Hit OK. So I'm going to stay here with the model in the wrong position. As you can see, I'm trying to test the parameters as early as possible. What is going on? Well, it needs to be the sketch of this plane, which is this one here. If you're going to have a look at this, going to edit, come on, edit sketch. You can see we constrained this point of a line to the origin point of this plane. And the problem is, uh, I don't know, uh, this is a plane through three points. And for some reason, it doesn't move around the region. I don't know how three point planes picks up their region. But the thing is, we need to have this line here. So we're going to do a for project, of course, project in this line. Gonna once I'm gonna hide the plane for now, it must confuse us. This line here is gonna be a construction line. So we want this point here over here. So we're gonna highlight the point, select the uh, constraint, delete it, see where we can move a line around, hit the coincident constraint once again, select the endpoint, and select that point. We get a fully defined sketch again. We're gonna hit finish sketch and have a look. Go back. I'm going to use thicken of this in a short while, but the problem is I did thicken all the patterns and then try to change the parameters and the model might break in a very unpredictable way and get totally destroyed and might hang up fusion. So uh, always remember to try to test your things before you go too long. We could also change this. We did a D1 divided by 10. What happens if we divide that by 20? Yeah, it works. So now we have a basic surface model that is following on all our parameters. 
So we can hide the sketch for now. We're going to go up in our create here and find thicken. Select this. Uh, it's going to be symmetric because I want to add material to both sides of uh, the surfer model. That means it's still symmetric around the construction I made. Uh, 0.8, so means uh, that the full thickness is 1.6 millimeter. Yeah, let's do that. Now I can remove this surface body. It's done its work. Remove gonna S and find pattern. I have added rectangular pattern here, so I can simply click that and change over to circular. Select the body, select the axis. I have designed this uh, symmetric around this, so I can use the region axis here. And of course not, we need two of those. I'm gonna hit OK. Fusion ends up with two bodies. Just go over to solid, combine, combine our two bodies. S key once again, oh sorry, S key and the high mood up mirror here, or you can search for mirror or you find it under modify. Mirror, what do you want to do? Mirror bodies, mirror plane is going to be, the, can be the face here or I can use the plane here, they are the same. Let's use the plane today. And operation join, fusion sees that the faces are aligning, so you're going to do a join. We end up with one body, so this looks good. For the fun now, we're going to do a save once again. Going to check if we change our parameters so we can break our model if it's still working. It should be still be working because we fixed the problem as 120, 100. We can change that to 30. We can change the angle to 30 or 15. And of course, we can change this if you want a shorter straight part, something like that. Let's do it like that. Going to do Control 4 to hide the edges. Have a look. Yeah. Turn on the edges again, control six. I have a specific video on that. So we have made our first body. S on the keyboard, find rectangular pattern. Bodies, axis uh, is gonna be that direction and uh, that direction. And we selected the, what we call X axis for first. So we're gonna set spacing and the dimension in X axis was D1. Sorry, no, no large. That's right, D1. Yeah, that's correct. You can see if patterns come up correctly. And here it's D2. That's loose correct. I want to add uh, something like that. Going to hit OK. We get a bunch of bodies. Select all of them. Do a combine. Let's see if we end up with one body. Yes, we do. And once again, I can do Control 4 to hide the edges and have a bit of a look what the shape looks like. Control 6 play around with my parameters. I can now start naming them if I want to do that. Uh, in most cases, I do something like this first to find out how the geometry works, and then I would redo the model and do everything with user parameters and set up things. Under 20, let's do 80, let's do 30 degrees. Yeah. We can play around the parameters and we will have a model that will update. Of course, if you make this into a massive pattern, you need a lot of memory and a quite good CPU. They can do all the calculation because uh, Fusion doesn't like large pattern. That's just how MCAD, mechanical CAD works. So in most cases, you would just use uh, appearance for something like this. But if you need to model it, this is how I would do it. A simplified model. If you want to make this up, look at this again. If you wanted to make this, uh, we call it happy mouth, or we're going to call it, uh, wait, a sharp edge in here, you need to do loft in, instead of a sweep I did. You need to add more rails and you need to think about that these parts uh, are not, uh, where are the colors? You change colors. Blue. Uh, these two parts, when I'm with some mad, I did a circular pattern. These two, these are not uh, anymore of the same shape. You need to make uh, every part a single shape and then work from that. So, uh, let's go back to our model, hit OK. I hope you have found something useful in this video for my stupid things as usual. And with that said, take care, see you around, and goodbye.